This is your brand new first ever Jaguar I-Pace all-electric SUV, 394 horse, 512 pound-feet of torque, run through a 90 kilowatt per hour battery. It is massive. The range is almost 400 kilometers. Jag says 377, but depending on how you drive, you can get more or less. Let's go quirks, perks, irks. So a perk right off the bat, LEDs all over the place. That's kind of expected though. The design language is exactly the same as all the other Jaguars, which is great for consistency. It looks absolutely stunning up front. Nice J blade turn signals. Got the four ways on just to show you guys what it looks like. There are Scorpion snow tires because it's the middle of March. Actually, it's March 17th when I'm taping this. 20 inches and they look beautiful. The rims are very elegant. It looks very, very sharp as well. Jaguar badging on the door. A little strange, but uh, I'm okay with it. This is the top trim HSE. And there's the HSE badging. It's been a weird week for weather. Uh, it's been rainy, it's been snowy, it's been dry, it's been sunny. Uh, it's been all sorts of stuff. So that's why there's a little bit of dirt in the car. Uh, roads are a little wet, as you can tell by that. So I didn't do any washing of it. Let's go around the rear. Look for the tailpipes. Oh, right, no tailpipes on an EV. So it's the EV400. That's the model name. So that's what your rear looks like. Backup camera is right under there. Let's take a look in the trunk. Nice power trunk. So storage wise, 656 liters of space. Put the seats down, you get 1453 or 1453. A little bit of storage in here. Very nice there. A bit of an irk is there's nowhere to release the seats uh, to fold them down from back here. You get a 12 volt and you get these little hooks here as far as putting a cargo net, but uh, as far as releasing the seats, I don't see anything. So again, bit of an irk there. Let's close her up. I'm gonna go back to the front. Uh, weird saying I'm going to go to the front of the car again. And here is your charging port. Nice, simple. We have a diagram there for those who are new to the EV world. Nice uh, LED turn signal, so it's a little dirty. There's another camera under there. Same thing with the other side as well. Let's just back up and get one more good look at the vehicle. Very nice profile. The wheels are really stretched out to each corner, so it has that nice, strong stance. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, some EVs just have that uninspiring look and feel to them, but uh, I love what Jaguar has done, really holding onto their heritage very tightly of a beautiful, elegant, and well-designed vehicle. Um, we'll look at the frunk in a moment. Here's your air intake. You can see it goes all the way through because of, well, because you can see it. It's pretty uh, blatantly obvious. Uh, definite perk is that the washer on the nozzles, sorry, washer nozzles are, are integrated into the actual wiper arm. There's one there. Another one is at the end of my finger. It's got a little closer. Yeah, right there. So very, very cool as well. Um, you can tell that it's all about aerodynamics because the windshield is raked on such a steep angle. Anyways, uh, that'll wrap up the outside. Again, there's a good look at the side profile of the car. There's a the front quarter. And we'll wrap up with a look at the very, very front. We'll be right back to take a look at the inside of the first ever Jaguar I-Pace all-electric luxury SUV. All right, let's take a look at the frunk. It's a word I don't get to use very often, so when I can use it, I will as much as possible. I pre-popped it. It's on hydraulics. Up it goes. A little bit of space. Um, you know, keep your charging cable in there as well. And there's some uh, your washer fluid reservoir as well. Cool that they have the VIN um, tucked under there. I'm not going to open it up. Um, but yeah, that's uh, kind of cool that it is right there. So yeah, that's what the uh, the hood looks like. And the frunk, 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 frunk. Anyways, I'm going to close it up. Another uh, quirky part is the VIN actually goes vertically as opposed to horizontally on most cars. Very cool. Uh, party trick everybody knows about. Oops, sorry. Sometimes I found throughout the week you got to give the hood a little extra push. And that's how the doors are able to be locked. Because sometimes if it's not fully closed, the doors won't lock as a little security feature. Anyways, back to the party trick. Uh, mirrors folded in. Door handle flush, push the button, out it goes, out it goes. And the cool thing, definite perk here, you can lock the doors from any one of the doors because all four door handles have that. Let's take a look in the rear seats. Very, very, very luxurious, very jag, very cool. Um, you can't put the seats down. You just push that button, down they go. Get your uh, armrest, couple of cup holders, a bit of storage space. What I really like is there's this little warning here that lets you know if you're gonna door somebody. <laughs> so if somebody's getting in the way when you're about to open the door, that'll flash. And it's smart because your hand's right there and it's not like it's tucked away there or there or there, anywhere else. It's in the most obvious spot. 
right where your hand is. So you'll see the flash. Please don't door anybody. Thank you, Jaguar, for taking care of the cyclists and pedestrians. Uh, definite quirk and air vent right there. Very, very nice. Got your heated seats right there as well. Five volt, 12 volt, five volt as well. Another five volt uh, little spot in there as well. Very cool. So taking a look at the front of the car from the rear view, uh, view of the rear passenger. Anyways, that's what it looks like. So let's uh, close her up. Oh, one other thing while I'm back here, the spoiler. Kind of cool. Just, you know, has that nice unique look. It's not a solid piece. Uh, again, all about aerodynamics. It lets the air run right through it that way to uh, reduce resistance. Opening it up, I really, really like the elegance and the simplicity of the door uh, design on the inside. Just very jag, very, very cool. Little scuff plates, 18 way seats. Uh, the cool thing, definite perk, your thigh uh, adjuster out or thinger. Sorry, my words are bad today. The seats are so comfortable as I segue into that. Heated and cooled on the top trim HSE. Um, the side bolsters don't look like much, but they are very, very, very comfortable. I really, really like that about it. All right, let's see if we can make this as short as possible. Definite perk uh, and definite quirk as well. Let's uh, call it both. It doesn't look like there's much happening right now. Start the car up. And voila, you got a bunch of different um, options that come in as well. So I like the simplicity of it. Very, very tech heavy with this vehicle. So uh, let's start with the dashboard. Nice and easy. So you got your speedometer on the left. You have your range on the right. Uh, I'll cover this in the driving portion, but you can absolutely, absolutely do one pedal driving with this vehicle. You set the regen for the brakes to high and you know, you only use your brake to come to a complete dead stop. One pedal driving, definitely the way of the future as far as EV goes, EVs go, sorry. Uh, really, really sharp. Uh, you get all your, your menu options tucked in from there. So there's your trip. Um, I like the info panel, the fact that you can pick whatever you want. You can get your driver assistant information, uh, map trip summary, map trip summary media are off. Um, I like the look of um, that little leaper there. So that's why I set it to off. Um, anyways, you kind of go through the rest of your stuff, standard stuff. Uh, heads up display. Can we see it? Can we see it? Let's zoom in. Yep, yeah, there it is. So it's a, uh, it's a paid option. It doesn't come with the HSE. So if that's what you want, uh, definitely take that off on the op 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 option screen. That word shouldn't have been so hard. An irk, an irk, an irk, an irk, Jag. I love you guys, but park is at the bottom. Drive is at the top. It's like they just did a 180 with it. it should be Prindle. Park, reverse, neutral, drive. Um, whatever. Uh, it's my two cents on that. Get your ride height adjustment. Um, there's uh, off-road, normal, and uh, comfort access. So um, high, lower, and lowest. Uh, different drive modes as well. So you have your eco, you have your comfort, you have dynamic, uh, and you also have a, a ADSR, which is very cool. So uh, let's jump into this uh, and let's kind of go through this as quickly as possible because this is a little, to me, it's, it's, it's quirky, absolutely quirky. So this bottom screen compared to the top screen controls your HVAC and, and the phone. Got to make the most use, got to make the most use to your space somehow. So let's go back to the HVAC. This is pretty cool. So right now it's on the heated or cooled seats. So it turns out blue for cool. You run it the other way for hot and you can pick what you want heated and what you don't want heated between your butt and your back. So you're going to pull it and that controls the fan speed. Got me so far. Pull up for fan speed and you can pull up again to get back uh, to the heated seats and then you push it and that controls the actual temperature. So it's a three in one controls the heated seats, cooled seats as your first one controls the actual temperature, which is your second one, and which is this, and then it controls, oops, one more up, uh, the fan speed. And it does the same for that. So completely independent climate controls, very, very cool, uh, or very, very hot, depending on how you like it. So that's that. I like that there's storage here, and then it's easily accessible, not only from the middle, but from there as well. Um, fun fact, an iPhone 10 fits perfectly in there. So very, very cool Jaguar. Uh, a bit of a quirk for me is that the steering wheel has a, we, can you see that? Can you see that? Yeah, there's a manual, come on, focus. There we go. 
Uh, there is a manual steering wheel uh, and supposed to power, but with a car that's focused on uh, minimizing weight, the less electronics, the, uh, the less weight there is. So very, very, uh, very, very quirky there, Jag. Um, parking brake uh, over here. Uh, kind of quirky, it doesn't really bother me too much. Your frunk opening is there, your trunk opening is there, and your uh, illumination controls are in the middle. So, got that covered. Memory seats, uh, standard fare. All right, seven minutes. Oh boy, let's, uh, let's speed this up a little bit. Okay, so here's your home screen. Tablet style. You swipe, and you swipe, and you swipe. Uh, a bit of an irk for me uh, is the delay that it takes. I want to pick my EV. So I have 62% of the battery left, and you can tell why the two buttons there, there's two different screens. So you can see how, I don't want to say how long, but the slight delay from getting from one screen, the other screen goes. So not the end of the world, just something that uh, is a little on the irky side for me. Uh, other than that, the graphics on this uh, display system are absolutely wonderful. Uh, Android Auto, uh, Auto, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, vehicle, pre vehicle precondition. You plug it in, and it actually can prep the car for you while it's plugged in, so it doesn't draw any power from the battery. So you want the car warm or cool or whatever it is, you set that in vehicle precondition. Very, very cool. Another cool factor is the um, uh, is your driving style as well. The car's not uh, not in drive. Let's put it in drive. See what happens. Anyways, usually these show up. I think we had a 98% score on that. Uh, let's put the car back in park. Um, and you can just kind of, there we go. There's my history. So a little bit of that trip and journey and power. So let's go back. Um, let's go back again. Anyway, that's, there's so many controls in here. It's just take your time if you're buying the car to go through it and figure out what, exactly what each one of these things does because the car is a marvel of modern technology. Very, very cool. Um, again, there's more of the uh, my EV information, so it's there, uh, and it's there as well. You know, there's no shortage of information here. Anyways, I think that'll wrap it up uh, for the review. Oh, uh, one other quirky, irky thing. Uh, an irk is that there's no sunshade cover. Uh, standard uh, roof uh, with this, and it is so heavily UV um, protected. Um, it really just does kind of cool the car a little bit. Um, but, you know... I know I just kind of want the control of having a sunshade. Uh, anyways, a cool quirk is a Jaguar logo is stitched into the headrest. Very, very nice. As well, there is some information here. The established 1935 Jaguar in Coventry, England. Uh, on the seats, nice wood finishes as well. Piano black gloss, touch is very, very sensitive. Just the, There's nothing, nothing the car can't really do as far as a luxury EV goes. I know Tesla has been king of the mountain, so to speak, for for the longest time. Uh, but watch out, you know, Jaguar is coming and they are doing tremendously wonderful things. And I think they're really going to make a big impact here. Um, and the cost of the car is, it's not cheap by relative standards. Um, a little under a hundred grand for this specific model. But you know what? It's worth it. All right. Compared to what uh, what Tesla's SUV is. Um, anyways, uh, this has gone on way too long. I should really slow this down and, uh, and, and wrap it up. Um, anyways, um, let me know if you have any questions on the vehicle. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And we'll be back sooner and later with our next review. Um, oh, one other quick thing. Uh, as far as charging goes, um, if you just plug it into your wall in your garage, 34 hours. You get one of the Jaguar wall boxes, 11 hours. You get one of those super cool, awesome fast charges and you regenerate 80% of the battery within 40 minutes. And you know, three options, uh, but there's plenty of charges out there. And as the demand for EVs go, uh, so will the infrastructure to support it. All right, we're back with the driving portion. 2020 Jaguar I-Pace, all electric, 394 horsepower, 512 pound-feet of torque. So I've had the car for a week and the instant torque is unreal. Um, but more than that, you know, everyone goes on about the numbers being so high. And yes, good on Jag for having really, really high numbers, but 
as a daily driver, I can say that there's a ton of comfort and the wheels are nicely stretched out uh, to the four corners of the vehicle. So it provides for additional stability. It's great around corners. Uh, the 360 camera makes it incredibly easy to park as well. Uh, the seats, the interior, you know, it's, it's a typical luxury car, but it doesn't take any gas. So yeah, you're gonna lose out on some petrol points, um, but at the same time, um, you know, it's not gonna be nearly as expensive in the long run to operate opposed to a gasoline combustion engine vehicle. So the one pedal braking is something I want to touch on and I mentioned it before. So I'm at 70 kilometers an hour, my foot's off the brake, 60, 50, 48, 46, 40, sorry it skips numbers. Anyway, so you can truly do one pedal braking here and the car comes to a complete stop. If you want to stop a little quicker, you just tap your foot in the brake, obviously, and it stops. Uh, but you really can do uh, one pedal braking, or one pedal driving, sorry. And you can adjust the sensitivity of the regen braking. It can either be low or high. I have it set to high. Um, for me, sorry, I usually have it set to high. For me, you know, I want to get as much regen power as possible. Uh, some people may prefer to have it on the low, which is why you're given the choice as well. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure how much I'd like the sunroof since it doesn't have a sunshade, but there's such a heavy UV coating and it's so darkly tinted that it really doesn't make it that much of a factor for me, I guess it's in comparison to what I thought it would be. Uh, quick, just change of gears, pardon the pun, but not really. I'm on a two lane road. Uh, just to show you the full turning radius of the vehicle, I can do a complete U-turn without touching the curb. So turning radius, full marks there. Infotainment system, nice and easy to use. Dashboard again, nice and easy as far as understanding and reading your information. Yes, there's a bit of a lag, maybe a second, maybe three quarters of a second um, from the time you push a button to get to what you want. So for example, I'm on this screen, which shows me the battery percentage of what's remaining in the vehicle. Green means what's left, black means what's been used, and I'll just swipe to the left. And now you have where the power is coming from, where the power is going to. So I'll put it back to the right to show you the battery percentage. And, you know, there's a small lag there, but you know what, if that's the biggest of complaints for the infotainment system, it's really not that big of a deal for me to be completely and absolutely and thoroughly honest with it. I love the way the car drives. EV technology is still relatively new. Uh, and yes, the car is nearly six figures uh, for the top trim, uh, around the high 80s mark for the, I want to call it an entry level. It's just, it's the SE, sorry, the S, then there's the SE, which is about mid 90s, and then the HSE, which is what this is. Uh, and this runs for nearly in six figures. I'll put the prices in the description uh, below. But I really like what Jag's done. I, I really like the driving feel, the dynamics, and usually with EVs, you know, you lose a little bit. Yes, you have the instant torque on any EV, but Jag has a lot to live up to. You know, they've done tremendous work over the last several decades as far as creating, crafting, um, and really pushing home the luxury world. And um, the fact that they can channel everything they've done from gasoline engines and put it into an EV is great work as far as I'm concerned. Uh, not a lot of oversteer, not a lot of understeer. The car is very well balanced. Um, very, very close to having a 50-50 weight ratio from the front to the, the front to the rear. Uh, I got mixed up my hands there. Uh, steering wheel feel is very, very nice. Uh, I love that the heated steering wheel button is on the wheel itself. Uh, against everything else, yes, for a journalist and anyone who's testing out the car, it may come across as a little weird, you know, why do you have the HVAC controls in the same spot you have your phone? But if you're buying or leasing the vehicle, you're gonna have it for an extended period of time and it will become second nature for you. You know, you won't be frustrated with it. You know, I was a little frustrated with it in the beginning to be completely and absolutely honest because it was new, it wasn't something I was used to. Um, but yeah, I, I quickly built a bridge and got over it, uh, so to speak. Uh, anyways, that's going to wrap up the video. Any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, oh, I, I touched on this before, but it's weird um, pushing the bottom button for park. It should be P, um, R, and D. 
going cup to bottom instead of bottom to up. Anyways, uh, that's my last two cents on that. Feel free to subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your comments. Let me know your questions. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it.